Here what I want to do is look at the vector product and how we calculate this using component form. So that is when we get given a vector and we have all three or even just two components of that vector and another vector and how we can calculate what this vector that represents the normal to the plane which is defined by these two vectors is. And in order to do that I've actually physically got to look at how do I combine these two vectors and multiply them together. So let's just take two generic vectors, <clears throat> A being A1, A2, A3, and B being B1, B2, and B3. And let's do a vector product, A cross B. Now that would be the equivalent of doing A1i plus A2j plus A3k as a product with B1i plus B2j plus B3k. So that would be me multiplying the two of them together. What I'm now going to do is multiply these together as I would if I was multiplying a pair of brackets. So I'd take the A1i, multiply everything here out by it, <coughs> the A2j, multiply everything here out by it, and the A3k, and multiply everything here out by it again. Now when we multiply them out, remember that the uh, a1, A2, A3, the B1, B2, B3 are scalars. The key part that we have to combine with each of these is the vector components of it. So what do I mean when I say that? Well, if I look at the first bit, what that means I can do is A1, B1 times the I cross I. It's then going to be plus A1, B2 times I cross J plus the A1, B3, times I cross K. What I can then do is work my way through each of the other components. So do the same thing with the A2J. So I'd end up with A2, B1, I cross J. I'd end up with plus A2, B2, times j cross j and then plus a2b3 times j cross k and then the final one would be plus a3b1 <coughs> i cross sorry k cross i plus a3b2 times k cross j, it will then be plus a3 b3 times k cross k. Great, so we've got all that multiplied out, that just makes it look a hell of a lot more tricky. But, think back to the previous PowerPoint we did. We looked at what happens if we take the vector product of the unit vectors i, j and k in the directions of x, y and z. So we looked at what happens if we take the vector product of those. So one of them was, if we take the vector product of one of these unit vectors with itself, that equals zero. So this here, this first term, is going to be a1b1 times zero. This one here, the a2b2, is j times j, so j cross j. That's also going to equal zero. And then the a3b3, the k cross k, that's also going to equal zero. Great, so that gets rid of three terms, simplifies it a wee bit. What we also are able to remember is the other various cross product rules that we get when we look at combining the i, the j and the k with each other rather than with themselves. So what we have to remember is that i cross j, what that gives me the equivalent of is that's k. i cross k, that was the equivalent of minus j. I can then look at this one. So I've got A2B1 bracket I cross J. Well, I know that the I cross J itself here, that's equal to negative K. I've then got this one here, A2B3. That's going to be the equivalent of J cross K becoming I. Remember, this is zero, so we can ignore that. We've got the A3B1. The K cross I gives me the equivalent J. And the last one, A3B2. K cross J 
gives me the equivalent of negative i. So what I'm now going to do is rewrite this out, but what I'm going to do is combine the terms. I've got the same unit vector part together. So for example, I've got one here and one here, both with the i unit vector. So I'm going to combine them together. So what I'd end up getting is a2b3 minus b2 a3 in the i direction. Remember, there's a negative here, so I'm going to take it with this, and I'm just going to have the i on its own. I'm then going to look at the j1s together as well. So I've got one here that's got a j component, and I've got one here that's got a j component in it as well. What that then is going to give me is plus a3b1 minus a1 b3 in the j direction and then I've also got my k's so I've got a k here and a k here that's then going to give me plus a1 b2 minus a2 b1 in the k direction so that's going to give me all of those together so I've now got a way of writing this normal vector using the cross product and using and combining the components of each part of the vectors in order to get this. Now one thing you may find useful to do is this middle part here, the J component, take out a negative 1 as a factor, and you'll see why in just a second. So I can write it as A2B3 minus B2A3 in the I direction. So then I'm going to be minus A1B3, take away A3B1 in the J direction, plus A1B2 minus A2B1 in the K direction. Now the reason I'm saying that is because what I'm able to do is in order to calculate this a bit easier, what I can do is represent this as a three-dimensional matrix. Say the A cross B, is equal to my i, my j, and my k component there, and then put the components of each of the vectors in one at a time. So I'd have a1, a2, and a3, and I'd have b1, b2, and b3. Now it looks a bit more complex, but what to do is if you want the i component, you'll notice the i is a2, b3 minus b2, a3. Well, a2, b3, b2, a3, and subtract them. So if I wanted to get my i component, I could almost put a dotted line in the i row and column, and then take it as being involving these parts here. For the j, I could do the same. I could put the row and the column there, and erase them, and then I've got a1, b3, minus b1, a3. Now the only difference is, I'm subtracting this. So I'd be adding the i, subtracting the j, and I could do the exact same thing here for the k, and then add it. Now, yeah, I'm saying to you it looks a bit more straightforward if we represent it like that. The easiest way to show you this is actually with an example and showing you how it comes to play. Let's imagine I want to calculate a cross b if I'm telling you that a is 3, 5, negative 1, and b is negative 2, 0, 3. <clears throat> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first write this as my matrix. So I'm going to write it as i, j and k, your components on the top. Then you put your vectors in. and put them in an order. So a first, so 3, 5, minus 1. Then your b, negative 2, 0, 3. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the elements that don't come into play for each of the components. So for the i, we ignore the column and the row that the i is on, and this is the part we focus on. So it's going to be a little bit that's 5, negative 1, 0, and 3, and that's going to be in the i direction. I do the same for the j direction, ignore the row and column it's in. So this one, I'm going to have a 3, negative 1, negative 2, and a 3 there in the j. The only difference is, and it might be helpful if you put a plus, a minus, and a plus above it, because I'm going to have to remember to take away that, but then change that, and make sure I add in whatever I've got for the k, and again the k, ignore the row and the column it's on, and what I'll end up getting is 3, 5, 
negative 2 and 0 in the k direction. Now in order to calculate the values then in front of the i, j and k, <coughs> we have to take the determinant of these small matrices. Easy way to do that, multiply the two diagonals and then subtract the second from the first. So multiply the diagonal, so I do 5 times 3 and I do 0 times negative 1 and I subtract them. You always do it in that order, left to right, left to right, subtract them in that way. That would give me the i, which would then mean in the j, I've got 3 times 3, take away negative 2 times negative 1 in the j direction. And then in the k, I've got plus 3 times 0, take away negative 2 times 5 in the k direction. Now each of these calculations are fairly straightforward and simple. I'd hope by now you could manage them all. 3 fives are 15, take away 0, that'd just be 15, so I've got 15i. Then this one here, I'm going to put take away, I've got 3 threes which are 9. I've then got two t negative 2 times negative 1, negatives cancel, so it's 2. So I've got 9 take away 2, so it's then minus 7j. And then the last one here, 3 times 0, take away negative 2 times 5, so 0 minus, well this is minus 10, so 0 minus minus 10, minus minus becomes a plus. So it then becomes plus 10k. And that there, if you are thinking about it in three dimensions of what it actually means, I could use the a and the b to define a plane, which has the two of them on it, which joins them. And then at the point where they join, this here would represent the vector perpendicular to the plane and be the normal to the plane at that point. So that there is how we'd physically calculate it using the component form of each vector and the end result on how we'd represent it. Now we have to be able to do this. There's a few examples in the exercises video of doing this. It actually becomes more straightforward once we get in the routine, once we get in the habit of taking the determinants of these little matrices and just following the diagonals rule and being able to represent it. If you'd rather remember the big formula from a couple of slides ago, there wouldn't be any issue with you doing that. But one thing I'd be impressed with is if you were able to go back to that previous slide and remember the formula here off the top of your head and recall it at will, I'd be very, very impressed, but there still would be no issue with you doing it if you preferred that compared to the matrix method. Good luck with however which way you pick to do it.